Okay. So, uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, in the engagement period, um, what happens or what we should do, what we should not do. Um, so saying, you know, uh, like the word of God plainly, very plainly declares that uh, uh, he wants us to, the Lord wants us to live a pure life and abstain from all forms of uh, you know sexual uh, promiscuity or uh, you know Im immorality uh, right so that's god's desire so so also so we have those very clear cut understanding and and boundaries right even though it might feel that oh anyway we are going to get married um you know it and it's it's happening soon so you know why not um so resist that you know know that uh, it is in God's eyes. It is sin. You know, sometimes we think, okay, maybe because we are engaged and we have parents' approval and everything is fine. You're all believers, so maybe it's okay. No, it's not okay, right? Um, because the culture, popular culture around, might dictate something else altogether. But um, know that you are a child of God. Uh, understand that you are a child of God, and um, ultimately, pleasing God is what matters. And um, and and the reason why God has these. Um, you know things in place um, these are you know every commandment of god you know we look at it this way uh, it's not to restrict us it, it is actually in in the, all these boundaries are for our safety you know it's a safety net right so it's never to uh, uh, hold us back from uh, you know going or, or experiencing or uh, you know uh, walking into new things no no it's it's never that god when he when he says do not do certain things it is a safety net it is uh, it is for our good good so we know that uh, you know certain things happen because of uh, physical intimacy and um well you, you consider the possibility that okay what if the engagement breaks off uh, after after a, you know a period of physical intimacy? Just think about that. You know, it, it's it's heartbreaking. Um, you first of all you are you know uh, overcoming this whole aspect of uh, this whole thing of uh, uh, the breaking of the engagement emotionally, and uh, and on the other side, there's, you're also you know overcoming the. The, the physical intimacy intimacy bit you know there's so much of shame and uh, you know condemnation maybe guilt and uh, you know all that so when when god says no it's for a reason it's it's so that he he cares about about us right okay secondly we see that um, you know there there are higher standards for those of us who are in ministry uh, those who are those of us who are uh, saying that uh, okay um, i'm serving in church uh, i'm preparing for ministry um, i'm already ministering this is a higher standard meaning that um, uh, there are we we are called to be examples right? god has uh, god has placed us in positions of influence um and impact and it's for a reason there are many lives who are who are watching us you know, people are watching people are learning um and we are being examples uh, sometimes uh rather than those formal settings you know like maybe you're sharing a word your uh, you know uh, uh, maybe a pulpit ministry maybe you're ministering uh whatever uh many times we think that those are the times that people are watching right but uh but know and understand that um, you're you're being watched all the time you know especially those informal moments when you step off the podium when you step off the formal quote unquote formal ministry time that is when people are actually observing they you know they they're seeing okay what are your choices they're saying okay how does this poor person respond to certain things uh what ticks off this person you know why what, what why is this person you know how uh, what makes this person lose the temper or what makes the person lose you know be who they are so they're observing all that so in those moments is when we are we need to be examples right and especially when it comes to making these kind of choices, decisions, you know, uh, you are being an example, right? So people are watching. So hold, hold. Let's uh, hold ourselves to a higher standard um, when we are um, serving, when we are in ministry, right? And of course, the other thing is uh, know that till you are married, you are not married. Okay, okay. So here are some signs, some red flags 
Okay, when we say red flags, we're saying warning signs um, that, um, okay, I don't have the PowerPoint for that. Um, some warning signs, okay, where they could, you know, it, it, it could, uh, when you see those signs, when you observe these signs, um, you need to make a hard choice. You need to make a difficult decision. And what is that decision? Okay, maybe this engagement cannot go further. Okay, now that's a difficult decision. Why? Because there may be, you know, uh, the engagement involved both the families. Maybe it was highly, what's the word? Uh, you know, it was a highly visible one, right? Uh, friends know, families know. You put those pictures on Instagram and Facebook and you said, you know, you changed your relationship status to engaged. You put that ring there, I, you know, say all that, right? So then it makes it even more difficult, right? Um, but you look at these, you know, this, these um, scenarios, okay? And you consider, okay, is it worth uh, going through okay we're not yet married we've made the uh, uh, you know we've made that uh, we've given word that one day we will be married and we're preparing ourselves for it so in that preparation time this is what you realize okay either you realize that the other person becomes very controlling okay okay controlling by controlling we mean uh, we mean that okay that person is very suspicious okay, whom are you talking to uh, you know, I want to. I want to see whom you are texting, whom you are calling, whom are you talking to? Why are you talking to that person? Why are you talk, talking to this person? You know, where were you at this time? Right. So the thing is, it's you're not married yet. Okay. So no one has a, a right over your time, over your resources, over your body, over your emotion. Nobody has. Right. You are even as you're preparing for marriage preparing to make the covenant the the one who is engaged to you does not have a right yet okay so when the person becomes very controlling or maybe manipulative manipulative we mean that uh, well the person is not speaking the truth outright but then you know other kinds of things influencing you trying to maybe even blackmail trying to do maybe even out of sympathy to make you do certain things it right? becomes becomes manipulative or the person is abusive, right? Um, getting angry, shouting, and maybe physically being uh, abusive, hitting, right? Physical violence, and uh, and the thing is that you're so afraid. You're thinking, right? Okay, uh, you know, how how do I? You know, I'm already engaged. How can I break it off? I'm already engaged. People know about it. The pastor knows about it. My friends know about it. My church knows about it. Uh, you know, how do I break it off? Well, if if this is a warning sign, it is a very clear sign that it needs to be addressed. And if things don't change, the engagement needs to be broken off. Now, like when we've had occasions where, um, you know, where the, the person was very, very... Um, controlling the family was very controlling um you know all that happened and then finally the, the engagement uh, uh broke off right was it difficult yes it was difficult um emotionally yes but it's good that at that stage the engagement is broken rather than you know getting into marriage uh, getting to the you know having the wedding getting into marriage and you know and going through all this trauma in the marriage, right? Okay, so uh, what, what else? Well, the person, one person becomes emotionally dependent in a very health, unhealthy manner, completely dependent emotionally, okay? Now that's, again, a warning sign, okay? So saying that, uh, uh, you know, for your happiness, for your mood to be good that day, if it has to be this person, then there's something wrong, right? You say, okay, I, I need to have this chat with this person. I need to talk to the person. I need to see this person. And only then, you know, I'm going to be happy. That's, uh, that's a very unhealthy dependence, okay? Well, yes, God brings another person to be to enjoy the companionship 
to be there as encouragement and support when things are when things go bad when things go wrong uh in in that sense yes they are a support that we lean on but to say you know every day every moment uh i need to you know i need to have this person uh speaking being there and you know to 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 be dependent in that manner is unhealthy right um so if if that is happening during the uh, during the engagement period then well uh, that's that's a sign that's a warning sign uh, it cannot be because you, you know we, we, you and i i mean like you are not capable we are not built to have that built to give that kind of a emotional support right only god is able to do that but if the person is unwilling you know to put their dependence on god to draw from god right because only he has the strength only he has the ability to to be the hope to be the joy to to be the peace and no human substitute can do that so if if the person is looking to you for that or if you are looking to that person for that then there's something very very wrong right so then that means that um, that has to change if it does not uh, change then it's better that the engagement is you know like um, terminated right okay and uh, another thing is um, not being able to hold on to a job uh, not being able to keep their word okay uh, not being able to carry responsibility you know, that's again something that is a warning okay so the person is not say something does something completely opposite say something i will do it and does not do it and it's not like just the just the one time every time right now there's some reason there's some excuse why the person did not do it right from simple things to complex things um uh, you know the person is saying continuously it's a pattern i cannot i cannot you know uh, i did not because of this right then it's a you saw that you see that that's a, there's a major flaw okay and uh, maybe some big differences uh what was not visible earlier if you are considering the person that becomes very very visible now right uh that what maybe that person was putting on a a mask you know i'm saying that person but it could be you also you know for that other person right you putting on a mask you you being a different portraying you know that's what happens right we want to portray our best side so we put on all our best side on display best qualities on display okay and uh, and all those other things are you know hidden but then the more we relax it just comes out right so maybe those big differences you know, maybe that person said you know or you know what you wanted to hear uh, are you a believer yeah 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 i'm a very strong believer uh, well they didn't get into any details and you also said oh you know i don't want to get into that but then you realize that well that is not so right so if there are differences then then that is also one sign okay um character issues maybe there is there are some very very deep seated addictions um you know disapproval of parents and spiritual mentors you know that's again thing right like i said uh, we can we can talk to them find out why they disapprove why they see Uh, those things that we are unable to see right and it, it's good to check okay um then the question okay uh, the big uh, okay there's some rosalyn what if all these points that we are discussing happens after marriage then it is altogether a difficult challenge to face what to do in such case yeah so uh, so rosalyn yeah so it it is possible you know it is possible like um uh, for maybe you know all these things happening is a very uh, very uh, uh, small possibility but but it could you know it could all these things happening but maybe there are there are there certain things happening and then you know the person for whatever reason backslides you know gets into some things uh, gets into addictions maybe extramarital affair whatever right so all that uh, so that's why you know um it's important to uh, take help 
no? even uh, it's, it's in the sense you um, as we go through marital preparation um, it's um, uh, even during the preparation process right you're taking time to do this um, even during that time it's important to know that uh, and understand that hey, anytime we face difficulties we face challenges in our marriage we can get help and these are places, these are people where we can get help. Okay, to be open to that, right? Right at the beginning, right? Um, say that, yeah, we want our marriage to thrive, and we would do anything, like to to for our marriage to thrive, and we'll make use of all the resources that God has given to us to make our relationship thrive. Uh, so uh, make our marriage thrive, right? So so that's the thing. So to know where can I go, because uh, in many societies what have uh, or in many cultures what happens is it is looked at as a stigma you know, as a shameful thing okay or it's sad but sometimes it is just brushed away it's like okay oh men will be like that you just have to adjust and go or you know you make a joke about it oh you got married oh your wife is like this that's it gone finished you know, and then you just say, okay, that's how it is. You just suffer and suffer in silence and keep going. Well, the thing is to get help, right? To know that, um, well, God wants this um, and we need to do something about it, right? So so that's the thing. Again, uh, Rosalind, like, uh, you know, the practical thing is that uh, in a real life case scenario, um, it's not easy. Like, uh, for example, one person might be all out to say, you know, I want to save the marriage. I want to face this difficulty. But the other person might be totally unwilling to do that. Right. So that's a very, very real possibility. So um, so one needs to come to that place of saying, okay, mutually, uh, maybe one person uh, can really go for counseling. Uh, take help how do i deal with this and maybe uh, after some time the other person will be uh, the other uh, person will be willing um and be open to take help to receive help right? and then look at it i hope that helps yeah okay thank you yeah, so, yeah okay so um so the thing is to uh, to really work at the relationship, right? Pray, uh, work at, you know, do those things. You know, whatever we are learning here, um, you know, we, we're going to look at a few things. You know, the you know, next chapter talks about roles uh, in marriage, talks about love language, you know, um, understanding uh, the spouse's love language and so on. So, um, so really use that or, uh, you know, uh, um, cause the marriage to thrive. Invest in in marriage because we, knowing that it does not happen automatically, or, or it's not automatic. You know, we need to invest. So, um, so doing that, you know, and not wait for things to change, uh, not wait for something bad to happen. Right, uh, wait until that happens, but start investing right from day one. And uh, yeah, so that's the thing. To that's. Uh, um, uh, that's something that we need to be proactive, be preempt, uh, and protect the marriage. Right. Okay. Okay. And then another que uh, Okay. Then another question is this: you know, What if God wants me to be single? Okay. Is that is that a possibility? Yeah. Um, but if God wants a person to be single or you know remain unmarried it could be for various reasons like you know matthew 19 talks about how for the purpose of the kingdom right for the sake of serving uh, for the purpose of uh, the for kingdom purposes rather uh, you know you remain single and uh, 1 corinthians 7 uh, 7 to 9 where paul talks about uh, singleness you know right um, he says um, let me just read that verse, Corinthians 7. Um, okay, 7 to 9. Okay. Um, For I wish that all men were as I myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. 
But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Okay, so in chapter 7, 1 Corinthians 7, um, Paul actually writes about marriage. He writes about some, he lays down some principles, uh, husband and wife, and, uh, you know, we're going to be looking at that when we look at, uh, you know, the physical intimacy aspect uh, chapter. So, uh, so in writing this, then he talks about singleness and he says, okay, uh, so Paul, uh, at the time of writing, he was single and uh, he said, you know, I wish that even you were like, uh, even as I am. Um, and it is for the sake of, um, he's saying it's a, it's a gift from God, you know, which means that you are empowered uh, to live that life, you know, uh, that kind of a single life. You know. God gives you that favor uh, to live that single life um, and not seek out a companion. Right, so so the choice again, thirty-two verse thirty-two. If you go there, um, Paul says, uh, "But I want you to be without care." Same chapter. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the world, things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. Um, there is a difference uh, between a wife and a virgin, and, and go on. So, the, so the thing is this, you know. He says in verse thirty-two, "I want you to be without care." Okay. So the, there are responsibilities, right, that come with marriage. That is something that we need to um, understand. That there are responsibilities, um, and uh, those responsibilities with the privilege comes the responsibility. So therefore, one has to, um, one has to. Uh, carry those responsibilities out. So that responsibility will, will mean that you need to give time, put in effort, right? all that, right? So focus shifts. It's not that you know all married people are, are going to be uh, serving God in a very inferior manner. No, not that. But the fact is that one needs to, um, you know, one needs to understand and know that it comes uh, marriage comes with responsibilities, which means there needs to be time devoted, uh, invest, investing in the relationship, and so on. Right. So, um, so the thing is that um, if you make a choice and you're saying, "I want to focus on, you know, uh, spiritually pursuing things of God, I want to serve God," and uh, and you sense that God has gifted you and called you towards that, by all means, you know, that's what Paul is saying here. Okay. So, um, so we need to under, uh, uh, do that. So there's no, there's nothing wrong in doing that. But, uh, but understand, and uh, um, and make sure. Okay, that is what God is calling you to do. Um, so some questions to consider. You know, do you feel that you are empowered, and that you have the strength to remain single? Okay, so it's because it's not like. Uh, a few months, a few years, right? It's, it, you're talking about lifetime. And uh, do you feel that God is calling you for that? Um, you know, so to think about it. There are, you know, there are people who are single, and uh, I, I can just think of one person, Mike Pilavachi, you know, who's, uh, uh, I think he's, he's in the UK, and uh, he's a pastor. Uh, the one of the one of the persons who mentored Matt Redman, and Tim Hughes, and you know all these worship leaders. So he's single, right? Uh, he has this. The, the they have this gathering called Soul Survivor, and uh, we're very very funny guy, and uh, doing a great ministry among the youth, among the youth and uh, young people, right? So, um, so he's single. So and and you know the thing is he he knows that he's gifted for that, right? So to make sure that you are empowered to make sure you're gifted, you are strengthened to remain single. Okay. Um, another question, do you feel that there is a specific kingdom calling for which if you do get married, or if you did get married, then you will not be able to pursue that freely? Maybe it's uh, in, a, in a dangerous place. Maybe it's, um, you know, something like that. You know, uh, I don't know, maybe it's... Um, geographical location or it's a tough place or something like that maybe god is you know uh, calling you for that specific thing and he's empowering you for that and the end and, uh, and you you feel that okay if i'm married then it's not really going to going to help okay is there something like that 
okay or um, do you feel that you would want to devote all your available time and energy and in, in pursuing a life of service to God and uh, any desire you know like for family uh, should be laid aside right so if it's uh, if it's any of these things any of these questions and you feel very strongly yes saying yes to this then you know you could uh, prayerfully consider uh, being single as well. There's nothing wrong. Okay, so there's nothing. Uh, uh, you don't have to look down on yourself, etc. Right? Okay. Okay. Any questions here? Okay. We I think we uh, covered quite a bit. Um, engagement period, singleness. Um, okay. So if you have the notes, there are some application. You know questions which you can um, read and answer if you're preparing and even if you're a married person this will be very useful very helpful okay um okay uh, you can look at the action item there it says you know if you have you could um, write down prepare a profile of yourself uh, um, and uh, you could actually you know if you're considering marriage you could you know have that ready Right. Maybe you've not even prepared the the profile uh, which you can post on matrimonial sites or share with people. Right? Uh, okay, this is the kind of person I am. This is what I'm looking for. Uh, just it, it helps if you have it ready. You know, that would be step one. Um, if you are actively, you know, in that place where you are considering marriage and uh, looking out for uh, 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 a life partner. Right? Uh, this would be a step one to do. Okay, let's move on to um, the, the next chapter, which is understanding the roles. Okay, so like we said, the yeah, I think there's a question here. Pastor, sometimes it happens that there are some things which you personally don't feel comfortable to share with family and everyone. Sometimes you feel comfortable with a person of opposite gender, and she's keeping on asking, like, how are you how do you feel are you okay and you feel like emotionally attached to that person from different religion what you should be doing in such condition uh, situations yeah so yeah so again so this is a, a real possibility um one thing is that you make a decision uh, within yourself that um, that you know you will not consider a person who's not a believer uh, for a spouse, for a as a potential spouse, so they do not come under that category. Now, yeah, it is true that they could be, you know, uh, others. Maybe, maybe that's a girl from a different uh, religion, different worldview, and then you know, uh, it's being polite, being being kind, being caring. Uh, well, but if you feel that, uh, uh, well. That you are getting closer emotionally, that you feel like okay, opening up and sharing stuff. Then, if you sense that you're in that place, uh, then it's better to back off. You know, it's better to back off and say, okay, we can. You can talk about the weather, you can talk about, you know, uh, cricket and politics and so on. But if you're going to open up and talk about your innermost desires, yes, it's true. Maybe you may not be able to, you know, share things with your parents for whatever. Uh, but you could always find a peer, uh, you know, of the same gender, uh, uh, maybe you know, a, uh, another brother believer who could, whom you could share with, right? Uh, maybe a spiritual leader whom you could share with, who would understand, you know. Maybe uh, I assume you're talking about, uh, you know, one is talking about uh, difficulties and and challenges and so on, right? So it's always good to do that and and really back off. You know, um, well, I would say, even if it's a believing, you know, person, even if it's a believer, uh, and uh, this person is being kind, being uh, you know, extremely polite, being caring, then you need to you need to really consider, right? Can I open up? Can I share? Can I, you know, be close to this person emotionally? Because if you're going to be emo close emotion, and you're not even considering that person as a you know, prospective spouse, or you're not in that season. You know, you, you're maybe you're a you're a student. You have many more years to go before you come to that place of considering marriage. Then, then I would say, you know, not even do that. Not even go there. Right. 
Um, so that's what I would say. Um, I hope that helps, uh, Sitkin. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, OK. And then also, you know, it's not the easiest thing to do, right? Because maybe, you know, they're at the age when everybody's like having girlfriend, boyfriend, and then they're all, you know, pouring their heart out. And then, you know, the whole whole night they are chatting on the phone, chatting, sharing, hey, this is what I'm feeling. You know, it's, it's not the easiest thing to do, right? And you want someone like that with you whom you can share, etc. But consider this, you know, uh, this, is, um, this is something. It, it is leading to something, right? It's leading somewhere. And you're leading yourself and you're leading that person also, you know, somewhere uh, when you get emotionally attached. So uh, so that should be a, that's a thing that you seriously think about. Okay, uh, do I want to lead this person? Do I myself want to lead myself, you know, um, to this place? You know, we're going somewhere, but you know, I'm not considered God. I'm not considered the thing. I'm not in a, in a place of considering, you know, courtship. Or marriage? Do I want that? Think about it. Right? Okay. Okay. So let's look at uh, roles. Um, let's look at roles. Thanks, uh, Sir uh, Roles and responsibilities. Uh, so we see, when we see that um, the uh, how uniquely God has uh, uh, God has fashioned us. Okay. And within marriage. As husbands, as wives, God has uniquely fashioned us to perform certain roles or carry out certain roles, uh, and it's and it's wonderful to see that. So we need to, for us, to, we need to understand what these roles are, even as we are preparing, right? And even as we understand what marriage is, we need to understand. Okay, what is the role of the husband? Okay, what is the role of the wife? Um, otherwise, it'll be all hearsay. Okay, where where. The day before the wedding, you know, that grandmother calls and says, Ma, you know, you need to do this, 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 you be this, or, you know, you're, then you're totally like, okay. Then someone else says, you know, this is what you need to do. You need to know, you need to cook, you need all that. And you feel so overwhelmed. You know, what is my role really? Everybody's trying to give their input and trying to fit me into some kind of a mold, okay, uh, which, which they themselves are, you know, maybe doing. So, what is the role? Okay, so let's look at that. Okay. Firstly, uh, you know, uh, let's look at uh, this verse, First Peter three, uh, verse seven. Okay. So, in understanding the roles, uh, we need to under uh, we, we need to first of all know that in God's eyes, okay, whatever role it might, might be, that we are we are uh, we could be uh, you know God has asked us to be, uh, whatever role it is, that we are equal in God's eyes. Now, that's a very important thing. It's a very important one, and it's a very liberating one, because when we know that we are equal in God's eyes, first of all, I know myself. I know that I am equal with my spouse. And when my spouse knows that I am equal, you know, we are equal, Spouse also knows, spouse also understands. Then it really empowers us for the role. Really empowers us, frees us, liberates us for the role. You're not saying, okay, hey, this role is, um, you know, it's too, um, you know, it's too less for, for the kind of person I am. I should not be doing these things. Or, you know, you might say, okay, how can I carry out this role? No, you understand that you are co equal. With your spouse, okay, so that's that's what First Peter talks about. First Peter three and verse seven says, "Husbands, dwell with your with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered." Okay, that's uh, that's the New King James Version. The, the message version says this. The same goes for your husbands. Be good husbands to your wives. Honor them. Delight in them. As women, they la lack some of your advantages. It's talking about physical strength, etc. Now it says uh, weaker vessel, right? But in the new life of God's grace, your equals. Treat your wives then as equals. See the important part of it. So your prayers don't 
run aground or your prayers may not be hindered so in in many marriages many homes you know homes uh, prayers are hindered we don't even realize it because well there's no honor we're not uh, dwelling with understanding and we're not considering them as co-heirs with us in christ right okay so let's look at one more 1 corinthians 11 and uh, verses 11 and 12 okay 1 corinthians 11 okay um nevertheless neither is man independent of woman nor woman independent of man in the lord for as woman came from man even so man also comes through woman but all things are from god okay so uh we read this good news uh version in our life in the lord however woman is not independent of man nor is man independent of woman for as woman was made from man in the same way man is born of woman and it is god who brings everything into existence so very very clear that we are inter dependent we are equal we are co-heirs with christ and we are uh, uh, interdependent okay so um so we 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 we, we realize that um, you know this is the truth of, truth of scripture and you see that it's um, you know even though the society of those times were very very uh patriarch in nature patriarchal in nature you know this is a truth of uh, god's word that that comes very powerfully through peter you know the apostle peter and through the apostle paul saying hey this is how it is this is what it is as new creations this is how it is okay so for us to you know embrace this truth we could be counterculture you could be a minority right people might say you know as a man you're the boss and you need to really show who's the boss in the house <laughs> you need to sit and demand certain things right uh, you need to sit and uh, you need to order things around that's what i did that's what my my father did that's what my grandfather did and hey, you need to do the same thing you could be a minority right in wanting to stand for truth which could be counter culture counter tradition okay but are we willing to hold on to the truth well, that's the question right okay so let's look at ephesians 5 okay ephesians 5 and verse um, 21 okay we have it here uh, but i just want to uh, you know before we look at the message version i just want to look at um, uh, the new king james version as well ephesians 5 verse 21 submitting to one another in the fear of the lord okay um, and then it says wives submit to your own husbands as to the lord for the husband is the head of the wife as also christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body okay so if we stop there the marriage is in great trouble <laughs> okay it talks only about the wife submitting the husband being the head if we read further that is from verse 24 we see okay therefore just as the church is subject to christ so let wives be to their own husbands in everything husbands love your wives just as christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any any such thing that she should be holy and without blemish okay um and says uh okay we'll just and it says in verse uh, 28 so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies he who loves his wife loves himself for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, of his bones. Okay, uh, And then quotes from Genesis 2 and uh, goes down to say, Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his wife, uh, own wife has himself, and let the wife see 
that she respects her husband. Okay, so uh, if you read the uh, message version, you know, it brings out certain, uh, you know, explain certain words, you know, it says, out of respect for Christ, be courteously reverent to one another. You know, that word submission, be submitted to one another. He says, courteously reverent to one another. Wives, understand and support your husbands in ways that you show your support for Christ. You know, that's an eye opener, right? Husband provides leadership to his wife. So he says, uh, you know, where, it's, where it reads, the husband is the head of the wife. It says, provides leadership the way Christ does to his church, not by domineering, but by cherishing. So just as the church submits to Christ, so he exercises such leadership. Wives should likewise submit to their own husbands. Okay, husbands. Go all out in your love for your wives, exactly as Christ did for the church, a love marked by giving, not getting. Christ's love makes the church whole. His words evoke her beauty. Everything he does and says is designed to bring, um, sorry, bring the best out of a, uh, oops, sorry. Um, let me just share that. Okay, um, so uh, verse 27, dressing her in dazzling white silk, radiant with holiness. Uh, and that is how husbands ought to, ought to love their wives. Okay, they're really doing themselves a favor since they're already one in marriage. So a lot of truth here, uh, uh, you know, revelatory truth that we need to uh, hold on to. Uh, no one abuses his own body, does he? No, he feeds and pampers it. That's how Christ treats us, the church, since we are part of his body. Um, so some key words here, nourish, cherish. Okay, we're going to be looking at that. And uh, so so in um, uh, Paul, actually, here in this, uh, in this passage, in actually bringing out how Christ loves the church, the relationship between the church and uh, Christ, so he's bringing out the relationship between the husband and the wife as well. And uh, so certain certain truths that he brings out here, which is very, very important, very, um, very important for us to know, very important, important for us to um, really put to practice. Okay. So certain things that we see here, okay, for the husband, okay, this is what we see. Okay, husband, love your wife okay do we see that yeah so he says how do we love you love the way christ loved which means unconditional agape unconditional love okay without expecting anything without putting any conditions uh you love okay and then second thing he says is you nourish okay nourish the word used there is nourish. Nourish means to nurture. Nourish means to feed. Um, so you provide the right nutrition, right? So it's, it's in all realms, like emotionally, you're nourishing. Emotionally, which means to you know nurture, to encourage, to speak kind words, to enable that person. Okay, so that's the role of the husband. Okay. So love, when we say um, love, you know, men generally do this, you know, they say, okay, I love and all that, but, uh, you know, we need to follow up with, with action, right? Uh, we need to follow it up uh, with acts of love. Okay. So I remember, uh, you know, looking at a t-shirt many years ago, it says love is a verb. Meaning love is not just about saying that you love. Love is not just about writing songs of love or singing songs of love and writing prose and I mean poetry, love letters and all that. It is a verb, which means it's it's actually action. Okay. Um, so this love actually leads to action, which might be sacrificial in nature. Okay, just consider that. Okay, so. It's great to say, I do. It's great to say, yeah, I love you the rest of my life and, uh, you know, everything. But when the wife wants a 
cup of water in the middle of the night and uh, you have to go to the kitchen to get it and uh, you know that's love because love is tough it's tough on your you know it's tough on you so that is love so it's not just when things are fine in fact the vow itself the marriage vow itself it's like you know um in good times and in bad in sickness and in health right uh, if you see you know it just brings out that contrast and it says that till death do us part right so that's the vow that you're making and um, it's it's based on this right so you love as christ loved so it means it will be sacrificial it means that it will build up the person nourish the person nurture the person okay so um, so are we doing that right for those of us who are married we need to ask ourselves i need to ask myself that question right am i doing that am i with my words with my actions am i cutting down the self worth of my spouse like constantly am i saying hey you are like this you will always like this you're always making these mistakes you're never on time you're always doing this uh, well this is never tasty you know am i cutting down the self worth uh, chipping away you know hammering away or am i speaking words of encouragement okay speaking words of encouragement doesn't mean that you have to speak lies that you have to speak one you know, of words of flattery no to say okay this is how what reality is but uh, this is how things are but then it could be this you know that you can you can you are capable of doing this right and to see something good and compliment that you know, many times uh, you know we just uh, okay let's say the wife cooks a great meal and uh, the men just eat it and then we don't say anything i just eat it now. and then one more helping if it's good and that's it you know how many do we how many times do we compliment and say okay hey this is great this, this tastes great there is a lot of effort that has gone in right um to say that it's it's fantastic how many times you know has husbands do we you know compliment the wife you know looking good today um, you know we, we said all that during the courtship time right uh, before we made the covenant after making the covenant you know how many times have we complimented uh your spouse right so that's the thing um the same goes for the wife as well but we're looking you know specifically as a husband's role right nourish um okay let's do a couple of things um maybe we'll uh, and then wrap up right cherish what is that word cherish mean okay now that's uh, that's again a difficult word right uh it means to value something as precious well that's exactly what uh, Paul is written here. Okay, uh, let me read that verse again. Ephesians five, and uh, and then he's saying, um, husbands, uh, love your wives, Christ love. Okay, um, then he verse twenty nine. He says, for no one ever hated his flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. So nourish and cherish. So cherish means to. to value something as very precious okay so let's say you have a precious maybe some gadget maybe some maybe a guitar or some instrument something that is precious you, know, you treat it well you you know you you uh, it's it's not like an everyday thing you know you don't want it to get dusty you treat it well you you uh, maintain it well right and that's the idea cherish um so so the thing is to you know look at some of the um uh i just have one more minute to look at one of the some of the situations okay how does the wife feel cherished or when does the wife feel cherished right um if the husband communicates if the husband husband shares uh, what he feels if he if he shares if he uh, shares his heart with the wife if he um uh you know uh, if he if he doesn't shut up that communication Know, close down that communication then the wife feels uh, cherished okay that's something for us to know uh, a wife feels cherished when there is when there is romance and not just physical intimacy for the sake of intimacy right that's something for us to learn men you know men are very good at it when they are pursuing the pursuing the the woman right during the courtship they do, they are, you know, suddenly turn into poets they suddenly turn into songwriters um, they do everything possible you know um, but then in the marriage 
is it still there right um that's something for us you know when was the last time husbands when was the last time you bought flowers for your wife right um to that okay a wife feels the last one and then we'll continue a wife feels cherished when a husband is trustworthy you know this is a big one and there is trust when the wife can trust the wife feels cherished okay so we'll stop here and we'll continue um uh, next session okay thank you um god bless bye bye